Today we're going to be fixing my faithful old milling saw, which is this one, which is a still MS660. Now it works fine, but when it ticks over, the chain keeps going round, and no matter what I do, I can't stop it doing that. Now that suggests to me that the clutch springs are a bit old and tired. <laughs> I bought this saw second hand and you can tell it's done a lot of work. If you look at the handle, the handle's all shiny. It means it must have done hours and hours of work. So it's not really surprising that the clutch has got a bit tired. So what I need to do is fix the springs. I bought three brand new springs here and it should be a reasonably simple job just to renew these. And hopefully I can cure it of the problem of the chain creeping when it's ticking over. The first thing I need to do is remove the bar and chain. That's a simple job. All I have to do is loosen off these two nuts here, take them all off, take the side casing off, and then the bar and chain comes off all by itself. Now the bar and chain is off, you can see the sprocket. Most steel saws have got this internal clutch arrangement and it's very easy to deal with. All you need to do is to flip off this C-clip here and then the whole clutch comes off. When you're taking off a C-clip, make sure your finger is behind it so that the clip doesn't go flying off onto the workshop floor somewhere. Put it somewhere safe otherwise you'll be cursing yourself later. I've just found on this saw that the clutch won't come off because this plastic cover is in the way, so I'm going to have to remove the plastic cover first. Before I can remove the plastic cover, I need to first remove this metal cover. Just be careful because the plastic covers on these saws can be very fragile, especially when they get old and brittle like this one. You can see this plastic cover has got miscolored, it's slightly brown color because of all the heat it's been subjected to over the years. Okay, now I've taken the clip off, I can just remove the clutch drum just like that and put it to one side. Also the needle roller bearing, which is this item here, I need to put to one side safely. Now I can see the clutch. Now the clutch you can see consists of these three dogs, they're quite floppy so that might indicate the fact that uh, these springs have passed their best. So I want to replace these three springs with these three new springs and hopefully it will fix my problem. The clutch on most chainsaws is screwed onto the crankshaft with a left hand thread and it's extremely important to remember that when you're trying to undo this you undo it in a clockwise direction in other words this way. It has a nut on the middle here to help you do that but the problem is if you turn it it just turns the engine and it doesn't undo itself. So somehow you either need to jam the engine, which people used to do by putting rope into the piston or a little plastic holder, and then you put your spanner to undo your clutch. Or well, the other way is to shock it off. Now, with the some makes of chainsaw, especially Husqvarna's, they encourage you to put your screwdriver on here and to knock the clutch off. That's good because it breaks the, the hold of the thread without actually damaging the piston at all. What I'm going to do here is use an impact driver to provide the necessary shock to break the hole that the thread has on the crankshaft. It is really, really important that you set your impact driver to doing up. In other words, to be driving clockwise. If you try and undo it in the normal way, I have an item here to show you, which is a clutch that I managed to disintegrate 
because I tried to undo it anti-clockwise. So very, very important that you do it clockwise. So I set the impact driver to clockwise here and then put it on and it should come off without any problem. Here we are, that has undone the clutch for me. And now I can withdraw it from the saw. If you look behind here, you can see the chain brake here and you can see the oil pump drive here. I'm going to put the saw to one side now and we'll just concentrate on the clutch itself because all we need to do now is remove these old springs and put the new springs on and then we just need to reassemble and hopefully we'll get a good result. All right, so we just have our clutch here and we need to get the right tools to get these little springs off without hurting ourselves and without damaging any of the components. It's a good idea whenever you're taking something complicated apart that you've never taken apart before to regularly take digital photographs. If you have a look at these springs, all of the hooks go downwards away from this surface. Also, you can see that this nut is raised on the top surface but it's flush on the back surface. So you need to make sure that it all goes back round in the right, in the right way that it came apart. Fortunately, being old springs, these come apart pretty easily. I'm using my favorite tool, which is a pair of long nose pliers, which makes this sort of thing very easy. So I'll just poke it in there, rotate round, and that spring's come off nice and easily. Go around and take this spring off as well. And this spring off. That's nice. Now I can just pull these clutch dogs off. I'll lay them down in the right order. Here we are. I'm going to replace the old springs with the new springs one at a time. And just to be sure I don't get confused, I'm going to put the old spring to one side every time. Whenever you replace clutch springs, you must always replace all of them at the same time. Otherwise, if one clutch spring has broken, it is because it's gone through a certain number of fatigue cycles. And if you don't replace them all at once, it won't be very long before the ones you haven't replaced will fail. And then you'll need to take the saw apart again. So it's false economy to only replace one clutch spring. Time to attempt to reassemble this clutch. I'll just put the dogs back on this little spider here. And all I have to do is to get these clutch springs back in the other hole. Now, because they are new springs, this could prove to be a little bit of a problem. So we'll just try. That was surprisingly easy, happy with that. Might not be a bad idea to wear eye protection when you're doing this, just in case the springs do go flying off around the room and hit you in the eye. I think I've got off pretty lightly with that. Now we have all the three clutch springs attached. All of the edges of the clutch springs are pointing downwards and you can see that the nut is pointing upwards on this side. And now the clutch is far less floppy than it was when I took the old springs, before I took the old springs off, when you pulled it this way, the whole clutch was very much more rattly. So this feels like a nice component now. Before we put it back on the saw, just have a little look around the outside to see if there's any dirt or any wear. Sometimes you might want to take off any rough edges using a file. And if you can see any dirt on this outer edge, that's also going to cause the clutch to drag a little bit. So I'm just going to polish this before we put it back together. I'm going to start putting the saw back together again now. Put this plate in. And then we get our refurbished clutch 
and screw it back onto the crankshaft. But remember, in order to screw this back on, we need to do it in an anti-clockwise direction. Just screw it in with our fingers. And then what I'm going to do is just nip it up a bit using a hammer and screwdriver just to give it a little bit of tightness on the crankshaft. The main tightening of this component will be done when the saw is actually running and there's some resistance of the chain in the wood. But that will just do for now. Having got the clutch back on, we then need to put the needle roller bearing back in, which is here. Don't forget to lubricate this with grease on a regular basis. And then you see there's a little notch on the edge of the clutch here, and that notch must align with the oil pump drive. Now the oil pump drive, you always have to look for it. At the moment, on this particular saw, it's just in here. Very hard to see, you probably can't see it with the camera. But that's where it is anyway. And we need to drop the clutch directly on top of that oil pump drive. And it should make a nice satisfying noise if I can find it. There we are. If it doesn't make that hollow sound, it means I probably haven't picked up the oil pump drive. This way, oh, that's all right still. Now that's not okay. So if it makes that noise, it's not good. And if it makes this noise, it means that I've got it in the right place. I then put the sprocket back on. That just sits on the clutch here. And that's held in place by this washer. And that is all secured by the C-clip. Everything is now nicely back together again. The clutch is fully assembled. So all I have to do now is put the bar and chain back on and give it a test. When you're putting the chain back on, just hold it vertically, especially with one of these internal clutch saws. Hold it vertically like so. Keep the chain tight with your hand and then you can just flip it back on the sprocket, hopefully. There we are, and it should fit without too much bother. Keep holding the saw blade with your hand so that it doesn't flop down and then put the cover on the side like so. And don't let go of the bar until at least one of these nuts is securely done up. At this point, before you do these nuts up, you need to just check the tension of your chain. And if necessary, just give it a tweak with the chain tensioner here before you do the nuts up. Seems to be fine. The last thing I'm going to do is to tighten up these nuts with a spanner. And just before we finish, just give them a really good nip so we're certain nothing's going to fall off. Right, we're now ready to go and test it and see if we've fixed the problem. Problem solved. It feels really good to have fixed the clutch springs. It might not seem like a very big problem, but actually it's quite dangerous. So for just half an hour's work and about four pounds, I've made this big powerful saw an awful lot safer an awful, and an awful lot more usable. I hope this video has been useful to you. Here on Chainsaw Shack, we're going to be doing a lot more videos on simple chainsaw maintenance and on also the more complicated things that you need to do. If there's anything you really want to see, please drop us a note in the comments below. And please give us a like and a subscribe if you like what you see here. My aim is to show that chainsaw maintenance can be a lot of fun and also really it's not that complicated. And as long as you're careful and you make sure that you concentrate on all of the details, you can keep your saw in tip top condition and also keep it safe and make sure that it works when you need it to. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.